Today was at an automotive event called Cars and Coffee that was held at Canterbury Downs in Shakopee, Minnesota. One of the cameras I brought with me was my GoPro Max, which is a 360 camera. I'm just going to illustrate for some of my subscribers here that aren't familiar with 360 cameras what you can do with a 360 camera at an automotive event of this nature and what the appeal of the camera is. So we're going to basically take a 360 photo and I am going to transfer it and open it by dragging it into the Insta360 ONE X app. I use the Insta360 ONE X app because it's free, it's easy to use, and GoPro apps generally suck and do not allow you to do very much of anything on your PC. And I'm assuming the same would be true of Apple, but don't hold me to that because I've not opened an Apple computer for at least 10 years. Um, so here we have a 360 photo. As you can see, when I take my mouse and move around, we can look at any direction. With this app, if I wanted to just create an image, let's say, of this nature, I just move my mouse around, get line up the picture that I want in that direction, and then here I can select the snapshot, and you'll see it wants to save it in the same folder. It calls it a screenshot, and it has a timestamp on there. So we can go ahead and save. So there, bam, we've got a picture in that direction. Or we could face it this way. Maybe I don't want my me to be in the shot, so I could go right there and hit stop, save again. And now I have a picture in that direction. Now you'll notice here we have one by one. I can select this to be ratio nine by 16, so I could line the photo up maybe in this manner. And then do snapshot and select save. It's as easy as that. Now, if we want to do Tiny Planet, we can go in the pull-down menu and select Tiny Planet over here in the lower left. Now I have a Tiny Planet look. Now on this size of a screen, it doesn't look all that great, but this could work for Instagram. So maybe this could be Instagram Stories or something of that nature you'd want to do it in. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and export that. So now we have a, a different format. Um, or we could do it one by one. So one by one, I'm moving my mouse and dragging up. And now I'm going to roll my mouse wheel towards me or backwards. And now we can export that. Save. Now keep in mind, as you can see in here, I am in the photo because I'm holding that selfie stick. It's a long selfie stick. If I twist it around, you can see the shadow because this was very early in the morning is pretty long. Uh, the one thing we can't do in this Insta360 app with a non-Insta360 camera is get rid of this area or get rid of where the tripod is or whoever was holding the camera. That's always going to be there. There's no way to get rid of that in this app at least. So that's basically all this app is going to do for you. It's You can create a crystal ball effect. So kind of like a, a circular picture and then you could like do a tiny planet in a circular ball if you wanted to. So we could take a screenshot of that. We'll go and take a look at these in a second. Um, you can do 16 by 9 format. Oops. Let's go uh, let's go default. So this is kind of like a widescreen format. So maybe you want to have like a something that gives a real overview of the entire show. I don't like that direction so much. I think this direction is a little bit better, not pointing into the sun. Go ahead, export on that. And this is all being done for free with the Insta360 app in Windows. Download that at insta360.com. Uh, so that's Insta360. Um, if we wanted to take this like a step further or slightly different, let's say we don't want our tripod in the shot, um, or I don't want me to be holding the selfie stick in the shot, um, we can use an app called Affinity Photo. Uh, they do have a trial, I believe it's like 14 or 30 days. You could certainly download it at their website uh, and then give it a try and then purchase it. It's kind of like an inexpensive version of Photoshop. I think it is a little bit easier to manipulate some of the 360 photos in it than is uh, than Photoshop, let's say. I, I like it better, so I went ahead and purchased it. So let's go ahead and select Open with Affinity Photo. So this is our 360 degree photo. Here, now by default, it comes up in this normal wide view. Uh, the key in Affinity Photo is we need to select Layer, Live Projection, and then Equa, equa Rectangular Projection. Equa Rectangular Projection. Once we're in there, we have this cursor, and I can press my left mouse wheel and hold it down, and I can spin around. And what I'm going to do here is spin around until I see me 
and most of my shadow. I'll stop there. Now the cool part about Affinity Photo and what I'm using it for specifically and pretty much only for this is over here we have what's referred to as an in-painting brush tool. Now you might see a healing brush tool, but if we click this little arrow and press down on our mouse, we can select in-painting brush tool. So what this does, it's like a little circle. Um, I need it to be wider. We wanna basically make it a little bit bigger so it kind of covers more space. So here we take this and press and hold and we drag it over our tripod, or in this case, me holding this camera up in the air. And because the shadows kind of give away, uh, give away that I was standing there, we'll go ahead and get rid of the shadow too. So right now we're just dragging over and kind of painting, end painting, or painting in the picture temporarily until we have all of this covered. And then let's go up and get a little bit more of that. And then as soon as we let go, the application will do its best. It will try to remove me and what it saw in the photo. You can see it also is gonna remove the lines. There's not much we can do about that. I'd rather have that be that way. Like people don't know that the line wasn't there. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and get rid of this shadow as well and see if it'll do a little bit better job with that, which it did. I'm going to, in the upper left, select the Move tool temporarily. The uh, reason I'm doing that is because it gives me back this section right here that says Edit Live Projection. So I can click on that and then now I can go ahead and drag in the photo again. And there you can see there's still a little bit of a selfie stick. Probably not important to get rid of that part of the selfie stick. It's pretty far away. Um, if we're going to do it, we probably want to select a smaller brush size because that's just a thin line. So again, we're using the in-painting brush tool to get rid of that. So that's basically the gist of it. Now the key is once we're done with that, now we can select layer, live projection, and then we need to select remove projection. That puts it back into that flat photo without me in it this time. The next step to save this is to select File, Export, and then we want it to be the JPEG best quality, the quality 100%. Um, by default, if we select More, we'll see that it has embed metadata that's important. So if this doesn't work out for you, just check that setting to make sure embed metadata is checked. Uh, when I installed this app, that was checked by default, so it shouldn't be a problem unless you unchecked it at some point. And then we're gonna select Export, and then let's just put uh, affinity, A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y, so we can kind of find that a little bit easier. So let's do, 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 select save. Oh, we better put this to our desktop. Let's do desktop and do, 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 yeah, save. So now we have that saved to our desktop. Now that we've done that, we can go back into Insta360 and in our desktop, let's hit refresh, oops. Refresh. Maybe we forgot to put it in the 360 folder. I got all these folders in here. Uh, yeah, we put it in the wrong spot, but that's fine. We'll drag it back here. So just need to drag it into Insta360. Now I have a version of the photo where I'm not in the photo. So now we can go ahead and change this to Tiny Planet. Let's change it to ratio of one by one. Roll our mouse wheel backwards until our Tiny Planet fills the square. Um, you don't have like a lot of fine control. See this light pole right here? If I scroll in on the mouse, bam, it's off the picture. Don't have control over that. So now we're going to select snapshot and then select save. So that's how you can get rid of your tripod or get rid of yourself in your photos and then just go into Insta360 and then modify it. And then as I was mentioning earlier, we could go here to 16 by nine, point it in any direction because it's a 360 photo, and then take a picture. So we could go there and select the picture icon and select save. Now keep in mind, a 360 photo is not as high of quality. It's nowhere near the quality of your digital camera or your phone camera, typically. Um, so keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the photos that we created here. So here's the original photo where I'm holding the tripod. This is the full 360 photo. From that single photo, we created this where I'm standing here in a one by one format looking in the direction of the sun. 
This is a little bit better looking shot because we're not pointing it right into the sun so the camera wasn't struggling as much, but we have this Mustang. We creatively cropped it where I am not in the photo. Uh, here I'm in the photo, but we did this nine by 16, like maybe we wanted to put this onto Instagram. Here we have the tiny planet. Again, we could put this on Instagram, which is the, I guess, nine by 16 format. So nine wide, 16 tall. And we created this one by one tiny planet with me in the picture. That would be perfect for a Facebook or Instagram for your regular Instagram feed. Here we just did this goofy thing with a black background with a circle. It's called the crystal ball effect with me in the picture. Yeah, so here's the one that we created where I am in a tiny planet, but I have deleted myself from this. Now, if you have a 360 camera, one of the interesting things to do is to look around and you see people giving you funny looks. Like these people are looking up at the camera wondering, what the hell is that guy doing holding that camera way above his head? So that's sometimes kind of fun. So that's how you could use Insta360 for free to manipulate your 360 images in your Windows computer and turn them into tiny planets or screen captures of any direction, whether it be up, down, anywhere in that photo, you could do a square image and then post that on social media if you're not into these funny little tiny planets. I think they're kind of cute still, although some people don't really like them. There's a certain hatred for tiny planet photos, but then a lot of people, when you do it, they think it's really, really cool. So I think there's always like new people that are coming to 360 cameras for the first time. They've never owned one. They've never seen one. They see a picture like this. To them, it's new, creative, different, and it kind of draws attention to it. And they're kind of curious about how you, how you created it. And that's kind of why I'm creating this video. A lot of my followers on YouTube that watch me are not into 360 cameras. They're more into cars and automotive things. I know a lot of my followers on YouTube are into GoPro cameras and 360 photos. One of my most popular videos that I've created so far is a comparison of the GoPro Max versus the GoPro Fusion camera. That one consistently gets more views than any of my other videos over the last three or four months. So I do have that following. So if you're into that group, uh, maybe this could help you if you're wondering, hey, how can I create some content using my GoPro Fusion or GoPro Max camera on my Windows computer? How can I create a tiny planet? Uh, this is an app that you could. On the GoPro Fusion, unfortunately, first you have to kind of get the two halves stitched together. Um, you can do that in phone now uh, and then maybe export that picture off your phone. Um, you can do it on your PC, but then I still think right now you have to find the old app that GoPro is hiding from you uh, the, that allowed you to kind of stitch together Fusion Studio, it was called. I still have it on my computer. I believe you still need to fuse those two pictures together into an image. And then even in that app, you actually could create some tiny planet and things of this nature. You really didn't even need Insta360. But once they kind of took that away, uh, or if you upgraded to the GoPro Max, now you don't really have a way to do that that I'm aware of in the default GoPro camera apps as of this time. So that's why I'm creating this video. So sorry for going on so long in this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you're interested in cars or cameras, such as the GoPro, uh, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel as well. Or I guess like is the thumbs up, right? So subscribe to my channel if you like GoPro cameras or if you like automotive content. Also check out my Instagram account. I do have several Instagram accounts like Marcus Glass Nature and Marcus.Glass. Marcus.Glass is the one that has all the car photos, so kind of follow that. I really like taking nature photos, but some of the nature content videos that I've created and photos I've created, nobody likes them. Uh, I don't know why. I think they're beautiful, but I don't. I get a lot of compliments in person about like eagle photos. Uh, but if I do a video of swans, nobody wants to watch it on YouTube. Don't know why. Uh, so thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient, listening to me ramble on. I hope you have a wonderful day.